Hey, happy Wednesday morning to you, everyone. Welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. <clears throat> I've got a long way to go, not enough time to get there, and so I beg your indulgence as I just jump right in. We're talking about Matthew 25, 1 to 13, and Jesus' parable. Now, one of the things I want you to notice, this is a parable about the kingdom. Did you know, Do you notice how Jesus said, then he told a parable about the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is like, and he tells the parable of the coming of the bridegroom. The, the ten virgins, five wise, five foolish. Okay? Now, this is really, really critical because the story of the marriage of the bridegroom is, in fact, the story of the kingdom. The story of the kingdom is the story of the marriage. But I established yesterday that God had been married to Israel. All 12 tribes. Well, after the division of the kingdom into the 10 northern and the 10 southern tribes, described in 1 Kings chapter 11 and following, Israel became incredibly wicked. There was social injustice. There was a total moral breakdown. I mean, it, it was absolutely horrible. God sent his prophets to them over and over and over. He sent Isaiah. He sent Amos. He sent Hosea. They were all rebuffed. There was no repentance. And so we, we find, and I'm doing this for brevity, okay, we find in the book of Hosea one of the most poignant stories in all of the Bible the Lord came to the prophet Hosea and he said, go and marry a daughter of whoredoms and take her to be your wife. Now there's controversy in the commentators. Was his wife by the name of Gomer, I can't imagine being married to Gomer, but anyway, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> was Gomer a woman of the times, was she just an immoral woman? Was she perhaps a temple prostitute of the false gods that Israel was worshiping at the time? It's, it's a little bit difficult to know as you read the book. There are some indications that, that make us go this way, some that make us go that way. But point of fact is God called her a woman of the time called her a daughter of whoredom. Now, how would you feel, guys, if God told you, go marry a woman who is a whore? This is not a happy situation. Not if you have any sense of holiness and righteousness and purity at all. But Hosea did what he was told. And three children were born to that relationship, obviously, over a period of time. Those, those three children were, children were named Jezreel. God named each one of the children. The very first child was named Jezreel. And the Lord says, call this child Jezreel, for in a very little while I will avenge the bloodshed of Jezreel on the house of Jehu. And bring, now notice this. Notice kingdom, notice kingdom, notice kingdom. I will bring an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. God was going to destroy the kingdom of the house of Israel. Now, he was not going to destroy the Davidic line, as Amos chapter 9, 10 and following, uh, 9 and following points out, all right? Destroy the kingdom, not the house. Kingdom, not house. So, the first child that is born is Jezreel. Second child is born, was, the, was to be called La Ruhamah, for 
I will no longer have mercy on the house of Israel. I will utterly take them away. Now look, God is giving a living parable. What is happening to Hosea and his wife is parabolic of God's relationship with Israel. And Hosea has got to be getting the message here to know that God is naming this children to manifest what is happening in his relationship with the house and the kingdom of Israel. So the church, third child is born and the, the child is to be named Lo-Ami. Call his name Lo-Ami for you are not my people. I will not be your God. And so the Lord has conveyed to Hosea, this child is not his. His wife has been unfaithful. And she has played the role of an adulteress. And so what the Lord says, we find in Hosea chapter 2. Say to the brethren, my people, and to your sisters, mercy is shown. You see, because in Hosea chapter 1, 10 and following, the Lord, in spite of what he had just said, promised a time in which he's going to do something marvelous, something wonderful. So, but, but nonetheless, in spite of that, in spite of the far off thing that he's going to do, he says, Hosea chapter 2, verse 2, bring charges against your mother. Bring charges. She is not my wife. I am, nor am I her husband. Let her put away her harlotries from her sight, her adulteries from between her breasts, lest I strip her naked and expose her as in the days she was born, and make her like a wilderness, and set her like a dry land, and slay her with thirst. The Lord says, I was married to her, and I loved her, but she became unfaithful to me, and so I in writing a bill of divorcement. Now, Jeremiah chapter 2, Jeremiah chapter 3, Jeremiah 51, and Jeremiah 54 picks up on all of these themes, obviously written at a later time, and dealing with Judah, but reflecting on what had happened to Israel. What had happened to Israel was that Israel, the ten northern tribes, had become an adulterous wife. And as a result of that, God said, I am divorcing you. Now notice that language. Hosea chapter 1 verse 10. Yet, in spite of the fact, okay, in spite of the fact of Jezreel, lo ruhamah, lo ami, indicating Israel's unfaithful unfaithfulness, yet the number of, of, of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered, and it shall come to pass in the place where it was said, you are not my people. Wait a minute, he just said that of Israel, the ten northern tribes. In the place where it was said, you are not my people, there it shall be said to them, you are the sons of the living God. Then the children of Judah, see, then the children of Judah and the children of Israel shall be gathered together and appoint for themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. What's the day of Jezreel? He's just said, the day of judgment. I'm going to destroy the kingdom of Israel. And yet here he is promising that in the day of Jezreel, which is the day of judgment, he's going to join Judah and Israel back together, which is the remarriage. And very quickly, let me get to this. Hosea chapter 2, <clears throat> verse 14 and following. 
Therefore, behold, I will allure her. Now, this is after saying, I'm going to take away her new moons, her Sabbaths, her sacrifices. Yet nonetheless, behold, I will allure her. I will bring her into the wilderness and I will speak comfort to her. I will give her her vineyards from there and the valley of Achor as the door of hope. You know, this concept of the valley of Achor is really, really rich. <clears throat> Look at Isaiah 65 on that. Anyway, she will sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the day when she came up from the land of Egypt. And at that, and it shall be in that day, says the Lord, that you will call me my husband. Now, wait a minute. He just got through saying, I'm going to divorce you. Now he's saying, you're going to call me my husband and no longer call me my master. In other words, you won't call me Baal anymore. For I will take from her mouth the names of the Baals. They shall be remembered by their name no more. In that day, watch this, I will make a covenant with them, with the beasts of the field, with the birds of the air, and with the creeping things of the ground. Verse 19, I will betroth you to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice, in loving kindness and mercy. I will betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. Here is the promise, or here's the condition of the unfaithfulness of the ten tribes, the divorce of the ten tribes, and yet marvelously, wonderfully, <clears throat> the promise of the remarriage of Israel. At the time of the making of the new covenant. So you see, the marriage of Christ in Matthew 25, unless a person can prove that the coming of the Lord in Matthew 25 for the wedding is a different wedding from that of Hosea, then what we have to see in Matthew 25 is that Matthew 25 and the coming of the Lord for his bride is the perfection, the consummation of the new covenant. And it is the remarriage of God and Israel. And it is the resurrection, as I will show you tomorrow. I'll see you on the flip side.